Before we can discuss the identities of the founding Knights Templar, we must first address the foundation of the Catholic monastic order to which they pledged their chivalry, the Order of the Cistercians. On March 21, 1098 AD, the feast day of St. Benedict, which fell on Palm Sunday that year, the monks of the Abbey of Citeaux, in Cluny, France, under Abbot Alberic, and swearing their allegiance to the Church of Chalon, petitioned in Exordium Sacri Ordinens Cisterciensis to charter a new monastery for strict observance of the rule of St. Benedict for a proper monastic lifestyle. On April 18, 1100, Pope Patial II declared the establishment of the Order of Citeaux as the Cistercians by apostolic letters from Troia in Campania. The Cistercians quickly differentiated themselves from other traditional Benedictine orders by changing the color of their robes from black to white, and by adding to their ranks lay brothers, called conversi, who were not ordained monks, but who were treated among the order as equals to them. St. Robert, a founder of the Cistercian Creed, set about to restore manual labor to the regiment of the order's members and to impose a more severe, strict, and enforced routine on the members in general, in reaction against what had been a perceived laxity in the monastery prior to that point in time. However, later in the same year that the Cistercian's new monastery was officially recognized by the Papal See, on July 18, 1100 A.D., Godfrey de Bouillon, King of Jerusalem, died, and was succeeded by his brother Baldwin II of Edessa, who was crowned in the Basilica of Bethlehem on December 25th that year. The immediate result of this succession in power was that the Roman papacy recognized the 20,000 citizens of Jerusalem who could serve as paid conscripts, the Turcopolis, a Saracen-style armed cavalry, being paid a fief de sude or lifetime annuity, under the vassals of the king's court, could easily overtake their own scattered loyalists spread out among the four metropolitan seas of Tyre, Caesarea, Besson, and Petra, the seven suffragan seas, and many abbeys, including Mount Zion, Mount Olivet, the Temple, Josephad, and the Holy Sepulchre, who all answered to the papal loyal patriarch rather than to the king and his armed vassals. So the papacy of the era established the institution of religious chivalric dominions and the formation of the first religious order of knights, the Hospitallers, or the monks of the Hospital of St. John, founded by the merchants of Amalfi, who were organized into a militia to combat the Saracens under Gerard de Puy in 1113. So, in 1118 A.D., Hugh de Payen, the Champagne region of France, born Legate of the Holy See and Archbishop of Léon's France, along with Baldwin II, King of Jerusalem, the Patriarch of the Jerusalem Church, and Pope Patial II, successor to Urban II, with four other noblemen and clerics from France, and one, Stephen Harding, originally from England, founded the Pauvre Chevalier du Temple, or Poor Knights of the Temple, stationed in a portion of Baldwin II's royal palace adjacent to the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. A decade later, in 1128, Hugh de Pans attended the Council of Troy and, on behalf of the Templars, 
officially adopted the rule of St. Benedict as reformed by the Cistercians, and added to the Cistercian white robe a red cross. The original nine founders of the Knights Templar were likely as follows. 1. Hugh de Pans, one of the six drafters of their mission. 2. St. Robert, then an abbot of the monastery of Malesme, seeking to effect Cistercian reforms in it and other monasteries emanating as satellites around Cluny, France. 3. Viscount Reynald of Bion, who retired when the order reached 21 members to become a monk at Citeaux in the Diocese of Chalon, France. 4. Then Bishop Gautier of the Chalon Diocese. 5. An early member, the prior Alberic of Citeaux, elected to replace St. Robert, but whom died in 1109. 6. And 7. John and Elboldi. Two monks sent as delegates to Pope Patial II, immediately following his secession after Urban II, to seek protection for their Cistercian reforms from the Apostolic See. 8. Pope Patial II himself. And 9. The aforementioned Stephen Harding, who was also a reformer at Malesme, and sought to expand Cistercianism. It seems likely that it was Stephen Harding, seeing the militarization into a chivalric order of the Hospitallers in Jerusalem, whom convinced Hugh de Payen to form the Knights Templar as a chivalric militia loyal to the Cistercian monastic order. Researcher Lawrence Gardner is quoted from his work, Bloodline of the Holy Grail, saying, The original order of Sion was established so that eligible Muslims, Jews, and others could be allied to the Christian order that became the Knights Templar. This Christian order would have been Cistercianism, and these others were, according to Gardner, the Disposini, or descendants of the royal bloodline of Jesus Christ. The six chartering Templars were all land-owning counts, or counts, of Disposni descent through the Merovingian rulers of France. Although the Templars may have originally been tasked with protection of Christian pilgrims in the Holy Land from marauding brigand Bedouin tribes, in particular the growing threat of the Ishmaeli assassin sect. The papacy had an ulterior motive in militarizing and deploying abroad French and other European noblemen, and that was to weaken these nobles' hold over their serfs so as to begin the Inquisition in France, to purge the Albigensian heresy of Catharism that was supposedly brought back to France by these now world-traveled noblemen when they returned from their mandatory military deployments in the Middle East. In short, it appears as though the papacy always intended to reserve for later exercise the option to betray the Order of Knights Templar once they became too powerful, which, of course, eventually they did. Using the Albigensian heresy to describe the Neo-Manichaean beliefs of the Merovingian Disposni, which had grown in popularity from the small region around Toulouse since the Synod of Orleans in 1022 AD, until it had become an accepted extra-Christian religion under Toulouse Count Raymond VI, 1194 to 1222. The Catholic Papacy, under Pope Innocent III, who ascended in 1198, began an aggressive campaign of violent invasions in Beziers and Carcassonne in 1209, 
pinning Raymond VI himself, then turned by the Inquisition's torture methods, against his former allies, including Roger, Viscount of Beziers. It was at the siege of Beziers that the papal legate to the mission gave the now infamous command, Slay all. God will know his own. On Friday, October 13th, 1307, all the Knights Templar in France were rounded up and imprisoned by order of French King Philip IV the Fair. 1268 to 1314. Using the ecclesiastical inquisitors sent to him to purge regional heresies by sympathetic French Pope Clement V. The Knights Templar were accused of a wide variety of blasphemies being performed during their secret initiation ritual, including spitting on the crucifix, denying the divinity of Christ, practicing sodomy, and worshipping a graven idol. A three-faced icon claimed to symbolize Baphomet, presumably a dialectically derived corruption of the proper name Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, peace be upon him. After a series of first political and then religious mock trials, the concurrent Grand Master of the Knights Templar, Jacques de Molay, was burned at the stake and, according to some later accounts, pronounced a curse on Pope Clement V and King Philip IV, calling them both to appear before the tribunal of God within the year. And within the next year, both the Pope and the King had died. Even before the ignominious dissolution of the Templars and the distribution of their estates, tremendous wealth and property to the Knights Hospitallers, etc., there was supposedly a doctrinal distinction made among the leadership of the order that in 1188 AD led to an incident called the Cutting of the Elm, a disagreement between King Henry II of England and King Philip II of France. It was around this time that Jean de Gisors, 1188 to 1220, split from the Knights Templar to form the independent priory order of Sion. However, before this event, according to the modern-day urban legends surrounding both the priory of Zion and the Knights Templar, both these organizations were one and the same. Supposedly, the Priory of Sion continued the inner order initiation rituals of the Knights Templar in secret, following the expulsion of the Templar order from 1307 to 1313. The French Priory of Sion allegedly split a second time around 1680. A.D., when the 17th and 18th Priory Grand Masters, or Nautenier, an old French word for navigator, were, supposedly, English scientists Robert Boyle, 1654 to 1691, and Isaac Newton, 1691 to 1727. This second split started a splinter group under Jean Tim Negri de Albes, 1681-1703, that led to a temporarily independent lineage, which was later resolved under the mutual grand mastership over both orders of Charles de Lorraine, 1746-1780. It has been claimed this order was continued on into the present era, with American author Eric Matter Lynn announcing in 2006 that he was the current Grand Master of the Priory of Zion. A so-called Rose Line, or North-South Meridian, 
can be drawn connecting the two locations of major contention in the historical myths surrounding the Templars and Priory. These locations are 1. The Church of St. Mary Magdalene at rennes Chateau, Languedoc, Southern France, established between the 900s and 1002 AD, and 2. Roslyn Chapel at Roslyn, Midlothian, Scotland, established in 1456 by William St. Clair, 3rd Earl of Orkney, Baron of Roslyn, and 1st Earl of Caithness. This ley line between these points is an arc along Earth's curving surface between them of exactly 1,469.6 kilometers in distance and an angle of north by 346 degrees between France and Scotland or south by 162 degrees between Scotland and France. The establishment of Rennes le Chateau in southern France around 1002 to 1050 AD occurred under the Counts of Toulouse, all descendants of Raymond I, following his rule 852 to 863. Although the remains of the church there, dedicated to St. Mary Magdalene, may be even older dating from as early as the 700s. Many modern researchers speculate this may be the original burial place of the bones of Mary Magdalene as well. During the decade from 1887 to 1897, the church was renovated by local priest Berenger Saunier, using 11,605 francs from unknown donors as well as funding the construction of his estate, including the Tower Magdala and Villa Bethania, including the purchases of land, between 1898 and 1905 at a cost of a further 26,417 francs. In 1910-11, Saunier was summoned to appear before the bishopric to defend himself from the charge of simony or trafficking in masses, selling appointments to church offices. But when asked to turn over his financial records, he refused to appear and was found guilty and suspended from the priestcraft in absentia. The mystery of Rain Le Chateau deepens when we learn that in 1891, Saunier discovered a collection of manuscripts written by his predecessor, Abbe Antoine Bijou, in a 1781 collaboration with Marie de Hapoul, possibly the daughter of Francois de Hapoul, 1703 to 1726, second Nottingere, Grand Master of the Priory of Zion's temporary splinter group founded by Jean Tim Negre de Albes around 1680. These manuscripts are apparently Latin transcriptions of passages from the Gospels. However, when one applies the same Knight's Tour method of encryption found on Marie de Hapoul's tombstone to them, they yield fantastical phrases carefully encoded. Of the two remaining cipher manuscripts from Renan Le Chateau are extracted the phrases from the first this treasure belongs to Dagobert II, and to Sion, and he is there dead. The second manuscript, deciphered, reads, Shepherdess, no temptation, that Poussin, Tenier, hold the key, peace, 681, by the cross, and this horse, literally, army. Of God, I complete or destroy this daemon guardian of midday, blue apples. 
If 681, the number mentioned in the second document, is considered a historical date, given the changes to the calendar adopted since then, then the first day of 681 would have been exactly one year and one week following the death of Dagobert II, King of Austrasia, 650 to 679, whom had been directly mentioned in the first document. The term Poussin Tenier may be an old French rendition of the word Poussin, meaning chicken, or may relate to Nicolas Poussin, 1594-1665, French Baroque painter, and David Tenier II, 1610-1690, Flemish painter. Nicolas Poussin's 1638 painting, Et in Arcadio Ego, sometimes called the Arcadian Shepherds, and based on the 1622 treatment of the theme by Italian Baroque painter Giovanni Francesco Barbieri, called Il Gericino, 1591-1666, depicts a tomb that was located, until demolished sometime following the 1980s, nearby Rennes le Chateau, engraved with the saying, translated, even in Arcadia, there am I, thought to poetically symbolize the image of a memento mori, or reminder of mortality. However, as explained by Poussin's biographer, André Philébien, the saying has the dual intended meaning that the person buried in the tomb had also lived in Arcadia, in the central Peloponnese. The final cipher involved in the enduring mystery around Rennes le Chateau is the so called Shugborough inscription carved on the 1700s Shepherd's Monument in the grounds of Shugborough Hall in Staffordshire, England, below a mere image of Nicolas Poussin's painting, The Shepherds of Arcadia. The monument was built sometime between 1748 and 1763, commissioned by Thomas Anson, paid for by his brother Admiral George Anson, and fashioned by the Flemish sculptor Peter Schemachers. Below the relief carving on the monument, an unknown craftsman carved the mysterious letters O U O S V A V V over D M on Roman tombs D M stood for Dismanibus, meaning dedicated to the shades. This inscription has been called one of the world's top uncracked cipher texts. Rosslyn Chapel began being built on September 20th, 1456 A.D., as a Catholic collegiate church with between four and six ordained canons and two boy choirsters to accompany previous Sinclair places of worship at Rosslyn, including the cloister in their Rosslyn Castle and the Rosslyn Cemetery, so that Mass could be sung for the souls of the Sinclair family. In spite of, or perhaps because of, having been built some 150 years after the dissolution of the Knights Templar in 1333, and some 300 years before the establishment of the Blue Lodge degrees of Freemasonry in 1720, Rosslyn Chapel has long been held as an architectural bridge connecting these esoteric orders because it contains certain symbols unique to each in one and the same place. These may be simply enough explained because the two riders on a single horse motif found only on Templar coins and engraved in Roslyn 
as well as the apparently tow cable laden initiate sculpture depicting the manner of presentation for a Freemasonic candidate could have been added later by Edinburgh architect David Bryce during 1860s restorations under James St. Clair Erskine, 3rd Earl of Rosslyn, and long following the later William St. Clair of Rosslyn, who became the first Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Scotland, F and A M, founded in 1736. Although the Scotto Norman St. Clair family testified against the Knights Templar, during their purge from the area in a 1309 trial in Edinburgh. William Sinclair, who erected Rosslyn Chapel from 1456, is still claimed by novelists to be a hereditary Grand Master of the Scottish Stonemasons, due primarily to Marie de Sinclair, 1220-1266 being given as the second Nottingier, Grand Master of the Priory of Zion, following its split from the Knights Templar during the lifetime of Jean de Guizors, 1188-1220. to 1220.